Good morning. I welcome you all to this session of fluid mechanics. Well, today we will be going to start a new section or a new chapter that is a few unsteady flow phenomena in practice. <clears throat> Although in almost all engineering applications, uh, the flows are steady or quasi steady in nature, but there are few occasions where the flow becomes unsteady. Now, in few such applications, therefore, the analysis of unsteady flow becomes important. So, what is meant by unsteady flow, which we have already discussed earlier, is that the hydrodynamic parameter or the fluid flow parameters like velocity, pressure and the rheological properties of the fluid changes with time at any location. That is the definition of an unsteady flow, that the hydrodynamic parameters change with time are functions of time at any particular location. That means, it changes with time at all locations. <coughs> so, depending upon the type of change or the rate of change of this hydrodynamic parameters with the time, this unsteady flow phenomena may be categorized in different regimes of unsteady flow. In one, the rate of change of the hydrodynamic parameter with time is very slow. And in this regime of flow, the temporal acceleration may be neglected as compared to the velocity head or the velocity of the flow. These classes of flow, for example, are uh, filling of a tank, the emptying of a tank by allowing the water to flow through an side or bottom orifice. These are the classes of problems where the temporal acceleration can be neglected. That means, change of hydrodynamic parameters are very slow with time. Now, another regime of flow is that where <coughs> the change of hydrodynamic parameters <coughs> with time is very fast or rapid. So, that the temporal acceleration is of considerable importance or the temporal acceleration is considerable as compared to the velocity of the flow. So, this is a real unsteady flow problem. So, we will have to take care of this temporal acceleration <coughs> in the analysis of the fluid flow. Third category of flow is the flow where this change is very fast <coughs> and very fast and sudden, so that the change in density of the fluid comes into consideration. Means the compressibility of the fluid comes into consideration. Even for a liquid, these changes are so fast, the compressibility comes into consideration and the elastic force of the fluid becomes very important. So, we will mainly discuss these two categories of flow where the temporal acceleration is of considerable importance and compared <coughs> of comparable magnitude to that of the velocity of the flow and in another one where the flow is the changes of hydrodynamic parameters are so fast with time, so that the compressibility of the flow comes into consideration or elastic force becomes important. So, let us start with the definition of inertia pressure, certain definitions of certain basic terminology is important. <coughs> <coughs> sorry. So, inertia pressure, inertia pressure. So, inertia pressure is the pressure which is responsible for causing the acceleration of a fluid mass. So, let us consider for example, a stream tube that is a fluid mass of within a stream tube which is being accelerated at any instant of time. Now, this <coughs> is accelerated because of a definitely change in the piezometric pressure acted on these two surface of this fluid, let us being accelerated in this direction. So, therefore, the piezometric pressure in this side will be more than the piezometric pressure acting on this side. So, delta P star is the difference in piezometric pressure, which is because of the difference in static pressure plus the pressure equivalent because of a difference in the elevation head from A to B. Let us find out that what is the magnitude of this delta P star in terms of the change in the velocity which accelerates this fluid column at any instant. Let us consider A as the cross sectional area of the stream tube and let us consider L as the length of the stream tube. Let us consider this is a length of the stream tube. Then we can tell <coughs> that the force <coughs> acting or responsible for the change in the velocity is delta P star into A. And that is equal to mass times mass of this fluid element in the stream tube 
times the change in the velocity that is with respect to time del v del t. And we consider a uniform situation that means <coughs> the del v del t at all points remain the same. That means the fluid velocity is same at all points, but which goes on changing with time. So, that there appears a temporal acceleration del v del t which is same as each and every point. So, now we can write m as cross sectional area a and length l into del v <coughs> del t. So, a is cancelled. So, therefore, we get delta sorry rho is there mass density is equal to rho l del v del t. So, this is known as the inertia pressure this is known as inertia pressure, inertia pressure okay? and if it is expressed in terms of and sometimes it is written as delta p i. So, therefore, we can write instead of this delta p i is equal to rho l del v del t. This is the expression of inertia pressure which accelerates a column of liquid of length l and it is the temporal acceleration. Now, if this is expressed in terms of the head that is per unit weight delta p i by g or this is expressed in terms of head, we can write that L by g. So, this is in terms of head, this is known as rather this can be written as h i is this quantity is known as this is known as inertia head inertia or accelerative 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 head this is known as inertia or accelerative head okay inertia or accelerative head now we come to barnoulli's equation with accelerative head barnoulli Lee's equation, Barnoulli's equation with accelerative head, okay. Barnoulli's equation with, okay, accelerative head, accelerative head. Barnoulli's equation with accelerative head, okay. Let us, <coughs> let us uh, uh, recapitulate the Barnoulli's equation. How did you derive the Barnoulli's equation? If you consider a streamline like this, and if we consider a fluid element in the streamline, the direction of streamline is, if you recall, then we remember that if the weight is acting this way, W, and the pressure forces are acting like this, that P, and this is P plus <coughs> del P del S into del S, if del S is this length, okay, and if this be the dis particle distance del Z, from a typical force balance on the fluid element, we derived for a general unsteady case V del V del S, that is the acceleration per unit mass is minus 1 upon rho del P del S for an inviscid fluid minus G <coughs> dz ds. This dz ds is this delta z by delta S with the limit <coughs> delta z tends to 0, at a point it becomes dz ds. So, this was the equation of motion for an inviscid fluid along a streamline or the Euler's equation. If you recall it, we have discussed it earlier. Now, if we consider the flow to be steady, then this becomes 0 and V is a function of S. So, we write it as V dV dS and then you integrate along the streamline, we get V square by 2. That means, integrating with respect to dS and take this, this side and considering the flow to be incompressible, which we did earlier. So, it is plus P by rho <coughs> plus G j, which is constant along a streamline. This is typically the Bernoulli's equation or equation of mechanical energy for an inviscid incompressible fluid, which is this V square by 2 plus P by rho plus G j is constant along a streamline. Now, if we consider the flow to be unsteady and the situation is such that del V del T, this temporal acceleration is comparable with convective acceleration, then in the integration what we will do? We will integrate with that. That means, if we do that, we will get that integration of <coughs> del V del T plus d s sorry d s plus integration of V del V del s 
d s uh, is equal to minus integration of 1 upon rho del p del s d s minus g integration of d j d s d s, which gives us that <coughs> integration of del v del t d s plus v square by 2 plus considering the flow to be incompressible, these terms remain same. So, therefore, we see the extra term comes as this integration of del v del t d s. If the integration is, now if this integration is made between point 1 and 2 at 2 sections in a streamline, then we get p 1 by rho plus, I write the, the, this term first, p 1 square by 2 plus g z 1 is equal to p 2 by rho plus v 2 square by 2, these terms pressure energy per unit mass kinetic energy <coughs> or rather we can write in terms of uh, g also. So, this becomes del v del t d s 1 to 2. Now, in terms of head, I think it is better to write in terms of head p 1 by rho by rho g plus v 1 square by 2 g that is the pressure head plus velocity head sorry plus the datum head is equal to p 2 by rho g plus v 2 square by 2 g plus 1 by g 1 to 2 del v del t d s. So, this is precisely the integrated form of the accelerative head. So, we can write the Bernoulli's equation in consideration of the accelerative head in this way. If we consider moreover the fluid is viscous, a real fluid, then along with that we take another term h f that is the loss, that is the loss, that is the head loss due to friction. So, p 1 by rho g plus v 1 square by 2 g plus z 1, the sum of the pressure energy per unit weight, kinetic energy per unit weight or the kinetic head plus datum head is equal to this quantities, sorry I have forgotten to write the datum head z 2, this quantity plus this accelerative head plus the head loss due to friction. So, therefore, we see that this way we can write the Bernoulli's equation with accelerative head. Now, we come to a <coughs> practical situation of unsteady flow, where the temporal acceleration is of practical quite importance is establishment of flow, establishment of flow, establishment of flow. What is meant by that? Establishment of flow. Well, what is establishment of flow? <coughs> now, let us see this establishment of flow like this. If we consider a reservoir, if we consider a reservoir from where the liquid will be discharged via a long pipeline like this, which is inclined down near the general situation and there is a valve, let us see that there is a valve which is initially closed. Let us consider this is at a constant head. Let us consider from this point, this is at a constant head h and let us consider from this plane, this downstream point here just after the valve is at an elevation h. So, now consider a case when the valve is fully closed, then the valve is open, then there is no flow of liquid. The static situation, there is no flow of liquid when the valve is closed. When the valve is open, the flow will take place. Now, what happened? Initially, when the valve is open, this entire column of liquid in this pipeline, let us consider the length of this pipeline to be equal to L, capital L. Now, this liquid column in the pipeline is at rest when the valve was closed. Now, when the valve is open, then a pressure drop, total pressure drop acting on this column of liquid, which is the difference between the piezometric total pressure force or pressure difference acting in this column of liquid, which is due to the difference in piezometric pressure at this point and at this point. This point is at a higher piezometric pressure. This is because of this head of liquid plus this head of the, this elevation. 
So therefore, the piezometric pressure because of the weight of the liquid which gives a piezometric pressure here higher than the piezometric pressure there. So because of this pressure difference, liquid is accelerated because there is no resistive force at the beginning when the fluid was at rest. So initially when the valve is just open, this liquid column gets accelerated and this acceleration is maximum at this initial moment. When the motion is set in the liquid, the viscous resistive force comes to appear or comes into the picture which opposes these forces so that the acceleration is decreased and ultimately the liquid attains a steady state condition where it flows under a steady velocity or a uniform velocity. The velocity does not change with time when the head is constant. So therefore, even at a constant head when the valve is opened immediately the fluid flow does not attain a steady state condition. So it requires some time to attain a steady state condition. This is known as establishment of flow. Now let us consider that portion or that part when the fluid in the li uh, liquid or fluid in this column gets accelerated just after the opening of this valve. Let us consider this situation. Okay. Now let us write the Bernoulli's equation taking a point 1, let us consider a streamline like this. This is the point 2 if we consider the discharge point. Here if we consider the point 1. Now, if we write the Bernoulli's equation at any instant, just after opening the valve when the flow is in unsteady region, the steady state has not, at not been reached, then we can write the Bernoulli's equation the here P1 by rho g. Okay, this is this and if we consider this label as the datum, reference datum from which we measure the potential head. So, P1 by rho g plus potential plus V1 square by 2g plus H is equal to P2 by rho g pressure here plus V2 square by 2g, the H is 0. Now, the frictional losses if we consider HF, the frictional loss is proportional to the velocity of flow here. So, K V2 square by 2g. So, frictional head loss is proportional to the velocity head, proportionality factor is k. We have considered earlier that in case of flow through pipes, the frictional losses and other minor losses are expressed as a constant with the velocity head, proportional to velocity. So, this represents all the losses, not only the frictional losses in the pipe, but the entry losses, the losses due to valve, etcetera. Plus, the most important thing is the accelerative head. That means, this is from 1 to 2 del V del T <coughs> ds plus 1 by g that is the accelerative head which we discussed earlier. So, this term 1 by g del V del T 1 to ds. Okay? Now, you see that if we consider this area of the reservoir is quite large compared to this, V1 is very, very small compared to V2 so that we can neglect V1. And in that case, we write V2 is equal to V that the flow velocity in the pipeline which is assumed to be uniform. That means, at any instant, the flow velocity in the pipe is same because the pipe cross-sectional area is same. From the continuity, the average flow velocity in the pipe is same which is going to be changed with time. So, therefore, we replace V2 as V. And moreover, P1 by rho g is here P atmosphere by rho g plus H because P at this point 1 is P atmospheric plus rho g h. So, P 1 by rho g is P atmosphere by rho g plus h. And similarly, P 2 by rho g that means, the pressure here is P atmospheric by rho g. So, if we substitute this, we will get the equation that if we substitute this, we will get P atmospheric by rho g will cancel, we will get h plus h in the left hand side, this h will be there, is equal to 1 plus k, these two terms, v, v2, no, v square, we write is at velocity of flow, instantaneous flow velocity, v2 square by 2g. Now, if we consider this temporal acceleration is same, with the same condition of uniformity of the flow at all locations, so it can come out of the integration and 1 to ds is simply the length of the pipe. That means, L by g del v del t. 
okay. And V is a function of time, so we can write del V del T as dV dt. So, we can write this as dV <coughs> dt is equal to, if we take this on that side 1 by L into G H plus H minus 1 plus K V square by 2. G into H plus H minus 1 plus K V square by 2. Okay. So, now what we do? We write now under steady state, if we write the Bernoulli's equation from 1 to 2, what we will get? Let us write the Bernoulli's equation under steady state from 1 to 2 with the same loss equations. That means, k v square by 2. If we write at steady state, let us consider the steady state velocity be v 0. So, if we write Bernoulli's equation under steady state, what we will go? What we will get? p 1 by rho g. This velocity at this point is called less compared to, much less compared to the velocity in this pipe plus h is equal to here p 2 by rho g plus the steady state velocity v v 0 square by 2 g plus k v 0 square by 2 g. There is no accelerative head. And p 1 by rho g is p atmosphere by rho g plus h and p 2 by rho g is p atmosphere by rho g. Well, so therefore, we get from here that h plus h is equal to this p atmosphere 1 plus k v 0 square by 2 g. So, h plus h we get as 1 plus k v 0 square by 2 g by the application of Bernoulli's equation under steady state where v 0 is the steady state velocity. So, now if we write this from this expression, now if we write side by side what we have got by the application of steady state Bernoulli's equation. Now, if we have this steady state Bernoulli's equation that h plus h is equal to 1 plus k into v 0 square by 2 g. Then, if I replace this h plus h into g as 1 plus k v 0 square by 2 here, then I get d v d t is equal to 1 by L into 1 plus k v 0 square by 2 g in terms of h plus h. So, 1 by k I can take common 1 by k even this 2 I can take common that means I can write it here 2 L into what we get V 0 square minus V square. That means I am substituting H plus H 1 plus K V 0 square by 2 G here I get this expression. So, now if we write D T is equal to 2 L by 1 plus K into D V by V 0 square minus V square. So, at t is equal to 0, velocity is 0. So, if I want to find out the time t when the velocity will reach a value v, an instantaneous velocity, then I have to integrate this equation. So, t is equal to integral dt from 0 to t. If you integrate this, we will get 1 plus k here, we will get 2 v 0 into ln, the integration will give v 0 plus v or we can write t is equal to 2, 2 cancels L by 1 plus k v 0 ln v 0 plus v divided by v 0 minus v. Now, to eliminate the k factor, again I substitute 1 plus k as 2 g h plus h v 0 square. That means, 2 g h plus h by v 0 square. Then I get, if I replace this, I get t is equal to, ultimately I get L v 0 by 2 g h plus h. If I replace this v 0, 1 plus k as h plus h 2 g by v 0 square here, I get L n v 0 plus v divided by v 0 minus v. So, therefore, I see this is the expression for time taken to for this liquid column to attain any velocity v from 0. Initially 0 because there is 
no velocity to attain any velocity v where v0 is the steady state velocity. So, let us find out what is the time taken to reach the steady state velocity, how we can find out when v is equal to v0, what is t? You see v is equal to v0, this is 0, denominator is 0 with ln. That means the argument is infinity for the ln, so this becomes infinity. So, therefore, we can write v tends to v0 when t tends to infinity, which physically signifies that after the opening of this valve, the fluid will never attain a steady state velocity, it will attain the steady state velocity asymptotically. In fact, the steady state velocity is reached asymptotically. That means, if we draw a graph for time with the velocity, if this is the steady state velocity v0, it will reach as it will reach asymptotically like this. That means, it at any finite time, it will reach a large portion of v0, but not exactly v0. Now, if we consider, let us think a particular portion of v0, if we consider that what is the time taken when v is equal to 0.99 of v0, then very simple. Here, if we put that L v0, v0 is the steady state velocity, that what is the time taken for reaching 99 percent of the steady state velocity, it will be 1.99 divided by 0 0.01. So, it gives a finite time and this becomes is equal to 0.27 L v0 by h plus h, taking care of this 2 g factor and this one gives 0.27. That means, we say that a finite time is there to reach 99 percent of the steady state velocity of any fraction of the steady state velocity, but v will approach v0 only when t will approach infinity. So, this is defined as a convention as the time for establishment. So, this is the time of establishment of the flow flow establishment. That means, there is a time required for the steady for the velocity of the flow to reach the 99 percent of the steady state velocity and is given by this equation, this expression. So, equation, general equation is this, that is the time required for the fluid to reach any velocity v, where v 0 is the steady state velocity from rest and the typical response of the velocity is like that. So, if this is v 0, so it will reach asymptotically to v 0 with time. Okay. After this, I will discuss a very interesting uh, phenomena known as water hammer. Now, we have discussed the establishment of flow, which is a very good example for a class of unsteady flows, where the temporal acceleration is of considerable importance and of considerable magnitude as compared to the velocity of the fluid and it can be considered, it should not be neglected. Now, there are certain situations where the changes are so rapid that the fluid compressibility comes into picture and the fluid density changes. And as you know, no fluid is there which is absolutely incompressible or 100 percent incompressible for which this bulk modulus of elasticity has to be infinite, theoretically infinite, which is undefined. So, for any large value of elasticity, all fluids possesses some sort of compressibility. But when this change of velocity is very fast, sudden change, then what happens? The density changes also fast and there is a considerable change in density which brings about the compressibility. So, what is the consequence of compressibility is that the elastic force comes into picture. That means, if at some location the pressure of the fluid is changed due to a change in the flow velocity, it is not sensed by the entire fluid instantaneously. That means, the rest of the fluid will sense it after some instant of time because of this compressibility effect. For example, if at any location in the flow of a fluid, the flow is stopped or the flow velocity is reduced and the pressure is increased. So, this increase of pressure and reduction of flow velocity will be sensed in the entire fluid. For example, it is done at some downstream location, then the upstream fluid will come into a reduced velocity state or an increased pressure state after some time because of the compressibility phenomena, phenomena of compressibility, nature of compressibility. So, if this, this will happen if this is very fast. So, this time taken for the entire fluid to sense this change will be considerable. So, this is conceived by the propagation of a wave. If the pressure is increased due to a sudden deceleration of the fluid, then it is conceived by the propagation of a pressure wave in the upstream direction with a finite velocity. So, this phenomena often comes into picture or practical cases like a hydroelectric power stations. As you know, in a hydroelectric power stations, turbines 
flows are sometimes altered according to the load. When the load is increased, the flow has to be increased. Suddenly, the flow in the pipeline leading to the turbine from the high head reservoir has to be accelerated. If the load is decreased, it has to be immediately decreased, the flow has to be decelerated. So, that valve is closed, immediately it has to be de decelerated. So, the sudden change of flow, sudden acceleration and deceleration causes this wave to be transmitted in the pipeline. So, what happens in this situation, this transmission of the wave, because the length of the pipe is finite, somewhere in the downstream the disturbance is created, somewhere in the upstream it comes from some reservoir. So, therefore, what happens, this wave goes to the upstream reservoir end and again comes back as a reflected wave. So, therefore, a to and fro movement of this wave or a repeated movement of this wave from one direction to other direction causes the knocking of the pipe and results into severe damages, serious damages. This problem is known as water hammer problem. Sometimes we know that from our uh, uh, common practical experience that if a domestic tap which is running full with a high velocity of flow is suddenly turned off, what happens because of the same water hammer problem, a knocking sound is heard and the entire pipe vibrates. This is because of the same fact that when the tap is turned off, immediately the fluid velocity is sensed to 0 and the pressure is increased, but that pressure is sensed for the upstream fluid by the propagation of a pressure wave, which propagates upstream and again comes back somewhere in the reservoir or high head over a tank, it comes back and this repeated movement causes the knocking sound and the pipe to vibrate. This phenomena is known as water hammer phenomena. Of course, the name water is unfortunately little misnomer because this phenomena happens to any liquid, any liquid where the flow is suddenly decelerated or accelerated so that the compressibility effect comes into consideration and this repeated to and fro movement of a pressure wave takes place. But conventionally, this phenomena is known as water hammer considering in almost all the practical cases water is the working fluid. Now, let us consider the problem of water hammer uh, in practice. Let us come to the problem of water hammer in practice. Let us see. So, this is a typical water hammer problem, water hammer. Now, let us see that there is a reservoir where the liquid is flowing at a certain head, constant head H, let is this is a constant head, let H 0 is the constant head, where it is flowing, the valve is fully open. Now, when the valve is fully open, the liquid is flowing at a some steady state velocity, which is very high when the valve is fully open through this pipe. The flow rate or the flow velocity depends upon this head and the resistance to the pipe. Now, what happens when the valve is closed, immediately the fluid adjacent to the valve comes to rest and its pressure is increased. But I have told earlier also and I am telling it again and again. So, after immediately the valve is closed, the entire fluid cannot come to rest instantaneously and its pressure cannot rise instantaneously because of the compressibility effect. So, therefore, at the instant of valve closure, only the fluid particles adjacent to the valve is closed and its velocity is arrested. So, what happens in that case, this fluid which is flowing in upstream region with the velocity v, for example, this is the velocity v, it pushes this fluid, compresses it and its pressure is increased. So, what happens up in this way what happens the for example, the fluid here compresses it and again it comes, its pressure is increased and when it pushes this fluid in the subsequent part, it is getting the compressed and its velocity is arrested and its pressure is increased. So, this way layer after layer the fluid is getting compressed. So, this way it is done and this is conceived by the propagation of a pressure wave from the downstream to the upstream section. As the fluid pressure is increased, so what happens? The pipe diameter may increase depending upon the rigidity of the pipe, its modulus of elasticity. So that in this downstream part of this propagating pressure wave, that at any instant if we consider the pressure wave at this location, which means downstream of this part, the fluid has come to rest, its pressure is increased. and a little enlargement of the diameter has taken place. That means, the kinetic energy of the fluid corresponding to this V 0, V 0 or V whatever you call V 0 has been transferred to this pressure energy or elastic energy of the fluid and to the also elastic energy of the pipe. So, upstream part is moving with the same velocity V 0 and with the initial pressure. Here, this is the wave which is moving with a velocity C in this direction. This velocity is the velocity usually denoted with relative to this fluid but absolute velocity will be C minus V 0. 
so that we will discuss afterwards. So, with some absolute velocity, the pressure wave is moving. So, it will take some time because the pressure wave is moving with a finite velocity to make the entire column to come to rest and with increased pressure. So, this is the situation propagation of wave after valve closure. Now, before analyzing such situation physically, we must know what is this velocity of this disturbing pressure wave moving from downstream to upstream and what is the magnitude of this pressure rise when the fluid comes to rest because of a sudden closure of the valve. Let us deduce that first. Now, let us consider the situation like this. This is the pipe and suddenly this is increased and the fluid is rest. So, let us consider. So, this is the situation. Let us consider the situation like this. Now, let us consider the fluid is flowing with a velocity v0 in the upstream direction. Let us consider this is the pressure wave which is moving. So, upstream part of the pressure wave is the undisturbed fluid with velocity v0. Let its pressure is p let its density is rho and the cross sectional area of the pipe is A. All right? So, density is rho. So, pressure is P and the cross sectional area is. When the fluid has, the pressure wave has crossed from this side, so the downstream part has already come to rest, the cross sectional area is increased. So, here V is 0. Let us consider why V 0. We will consider simply V. So, V is 0. Okay. So, pressure here is more P plus delta P. Similarly, the density here is more rho plus delta rho and area is A plus delta. These are the quantity, corresponding quantities at the upstream where, uh, sorry, at the downstream of this pressure wave where the velocity is 0. Now, let us consider the pressure wave is moving with a velocity C relative to this fluid. Let us consider V0, sorry, what we considered because on otherwise it will make a complication. So, here V is equal to V0, here V is equal to V0, that means the initial velocity. So, let us consider the pressure wave is moving with a velocity C relative to this undisturbed fluid, that means with this V0, that means the actual velocity of the or absolute velocity of the pressure wave is C minus V0. Why I have taken C? just like that. Why not C as the absolute velocity? So, accordingly, we can tell with relative to that it is moving with C plus V0. This is because in the formula deduced, we will get an interesting expression relating to this velocity of this uh, pressure wave, disturbing pressure wave with respect to the undisturbed fluid. That is why we have denoted C as the velocity of the pressure wave with respect to the undisturbed fluid. So, that is C minus V0 is its absolute velocity. So, let us consider this situation. Now, if we make an analysis for the control volume. Now, here let us make these things more clear. Actually, there will not be such an abrupt change in this. So, it, the change will be like this. So, this is the, let this is the. Now, let us consider a, this is the pressure wave which is moving with C with relative to this velocity V0. Now, what we are doing? So, if we analyze this situation by a control volume analysis, you know earlier we have seen this type of situation is unsteady. Why? Because a point here, for example, having a velocity V0, rho density, rho pressure P, area A. So, all these parameter will change to these values when the wave has passed through it. So, this way for all the points in the upstream or even all the points in the downstream which were earlier with these values changes to this. So, with time the hydrodynamic parameter at any point changes, with, ch changes. But to make this steady, we can consider a standing pressure wave. That means, there is no movement of the pressure wave. That means, we superimpose a velocity C minus V0 to the entire system, so that the pressure wave becomes stationary. And in that case, we can tell this the fluid is approaching with the pressure wave with a velocity, if we make the pressure wave stationary, that means we impose a velocity C minus V0 in the opposite direction. So, that means in that case, this is the fluid is approaching with a velocity C and is going out with a velocity C minus V0, because this C minus V0 is the absolute velocity of the pressure wave, which is superimposed in the entire system in the opposite direction, so that the pressure wave becomes standing wave. In that case, all the points, the hydrodynamic parameters are invariant with time. Now, let us consider a control volume like this. This is the control volume. This is the control volume. So, this side the quantities are this 
and this side the quantities are like this with C minus V0. Pressure is P plus delta P. So therefore, the pressure acting in this side is P plus delta P, pressure acting on this side is P. Now let us write the continuity equation. This is A. So continuity equation gives A rho C, the mass flow rate through the control volume. This is the control volume. I have already denoted this is equal to the mass flow rate out. So this side if we equate, it is A plus delta A into rho plus delta rho is the density, rho plus delta rho times C minus V0. So if we equate this, we get this side A rho plus A rho plus A delta rho plus rho delta A times C minus so, A rho C cancels from both the places. So, therefore, only thing is that A rho V0 minus A rho V0, this comes on this side. So, that A rho V0, A rho V0 becomes equal to A rho C cancels. So, only A rho V0 that becomes equal to A delta rho plus rho delta A, this entire things times simple algebra C minus V0. From this step, we can write A rho C cancels. So, A rho V0 comes this side so that we can write this. So now if we divide this quantity by A rho C minus V0, this quantity both the sides, so here we get V0 by C minus V0 is equal to A rho, that means we get delta rho by rho plus delta A by A. So this is one useful relationship obtained from the continuity equation. Now let us see the momentum equation. If we write the momentum equation, that means the equation of motion for this control volume or momentum theorem for the control volume, then we can write that the mass flow A rho C times the velocity of A flux, that means C minus V0 minus C. It is the rate of momentum A flux in this direction, if we consider this direction as the positive direction. So what is the net force acting in this direction? P into a plus delta A minus P plus delta P into, here one thing has to be understood that this P is acting not only this surface, but on this surface also. We consider the P plus delta P to be prevailing only at this inlet section. So this section transition from this lower cross section to a higher cross section, this part also the pressure acting on the control volume is P. So therefore the projected area on which the component of the pressure will come in this direction, so which will be equal to P times the total area. That means this area plus the projected part of this area, so that ultimately A plus delta is the area over which P, the pressure P is acting. And this side of the control volume P plus delta P over the same area A plus delta A. So if you do that, we get minus ACC cancels rho V0 is equal to this side if you see P into A plus delta A is there, so minus delta P A plus delta A. So neglecting these two higher order terms, which we did for continuity equation also, we can rate, we can write A rho V0, A rho V0 is equal to delta P A. All right, A rho V0 is equal to delta P A. Now we can write delta P is equal to rho V0 because A A cancels rho V0. So we can write delta P is equal to rho V0. Now delta P by uh, C, so A rho C C minus V0. So I have uh, done one mistake that here A rho C will be there. I am sorry, A rho C A rho C V0 because A rho C V0. So therefore A rho C will be there. So therefore, delta P is, sorry, rho C V0 or delta P by rho G in terms of the rise in pressure head is C V0 by G. So this is very important formula that this rise in the pressure head due to the deceleration of the fluid is rho C V0 or delta P by rho G is C V delta P by rho G is C V0 by G, that is the change in the pressure rate. Now, if we see that this value delta P by rho 0 is C V by rho 0 and here we can see that we can write another step 
that delta p from here by rho c square is equal to v0 by c. We can write delta p by rho c square that means from here this step rho c square is v0 by c. Now, it has been found in practice and it has been observed that the value of c is very, very large compared to v0. So, from this equation obtained from continuity, we can write again that v0 by c considering v0 to be small delta rho by rho plus delta a by a. All right. So, if we equate these two, then what we get? If we equate these two, then what we get? That means, delta v0 by c from these two, we get delta p by rho c square delta p by rho c square is equal to delta rho by rho plus delta a by c. All right, delta p by rho c square is delta rho by rho plus delta a by a. Now, this delta rho by rho, we can replace from the definition of bulk modulus of elasticity, it is, is equal to E delta rho by rho. So, this is the definition of bulk modulus of elasticity of the any medium. So, for the fluid, if e, e is the bulk modulus of elasticity, so delta rho by rho is delta p by E. So, we can write delta p by rho c square is delta p by E plus delta A by A. Well, today I will stop here next class.